right now that we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And uh, I am grateful that God has poured out of His Spirit upon all flesh, as the Scripture says in the book of Joel. And today I want to talk to you on a subject that perhaps you've never heard a message on. I'm, in fact, I am certain that there are people in this room who have never actually heard uh, this be talked about or, or ministered about. And so uh, I want to talk to you about this question, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for today? Okay, that is a very powerful, powerful question. And uh, let me just say that there, uh, some estimate that there are over 600 million believers around the world who believe in and practice uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, they, 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 they believe in and, and practice the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, let me say that that, that that group of people that we defined a couple of weeks ago, we call them Pentecostals or Charismatics, that, that group of people around the world in many, many countries of the world is the fastest growing segment of Christianity. We know that from uh, many, many st statistics, all right? And so let me just say that this is not something that the Lord has done over kind of in a little corner somewhere. It's not something that is strange or weird or odd. Uh, it might be different for you. You may never have read the Bible, the book of Acts. You may never have experienced this, but uh, I want you to understand that it is uh, something that is quite interesting to look at. And so how many of you realize that many people put on a pair of glasses, in a sense, when they read the Scripture, right? What you've been taught as a child, the churches that you've been a part of, what you have learned, the way... And so if you have put on a pair of glasses and you have read the Scripture in a certain way, what I want you to do today is just open up your mind, open up your heart, open up your spirit, and allow the Word of God to speak to you. How many of you believe that the Bible is true? It's real. It's powerful, all right? And so uh, I'm going going to be preaching the, from the Word today, and so I'd like to read Acts chapter 1 and verse number 5. Acts chapter 1 and verse 5. If you have a Bible, you can open up to it, and uh, it's a powerful scripture today. It says this, for John truly baptized with water. Okay, how many remember John? Uh, John was the one who he baptized in water. He immersed people in water. Uh, but the scripture goes on to say, But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, uh, I understand that around the world there's a lot of things that are done that are, are, are not scriptural. How many of you agree with that? One time I was watching television and I watched uh, a, a little program on TV and they had people spitting demons into ba paper bags. I was looking at that and I was thinking, that's funny. I've read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Nowhere does it tell us to spit demons in the bags. I mean, what, first thing is, you know, it's not even scriptural. The second thing, how they think a, a bag is going to hold a demon. I mean, it's just really some ridiculous stuff, Right. But let me tell you, if something's found in the Word of God, if it's there numerous times, if there's many references to it, we ought to be able to understand it, right? We, we shouldn't just skim over it, just kind of ignore it. And unfortunately, there are many churches in the world today who never preach about this subject. I believe that it's my responsibility as a pastor, right? One day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, and my works, my heart, my motive, it's all going to be judged, right? at the judgment seat of Christ. And let me tell you something. I want the Lord to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Whether the message is popular, whether it's received, whether, uh, you know, people grab it, understand it, whether there's even people that, 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 that say, no, they resist it. Listen, I'm going to be re responsible for what I share. And so I take my calling very, very seriously. And I want to preach the entire word of God. How many of you think that's important? I do. I think it's very important. All right. So let me just say that if it's not in the the Bible, we shouldn't be doing it, but if it's in the Bible, we should know it and understand it. How many of you are in agreement of that? You should wave at me if you're in agreement. Amen. Amen. And there's a lot of people who have been taught that anything miraculous ceased after the days of the apostles. It's a doctrine called cessation, cessa cessationism, okay? 
That's a difficult word for me to say. But anyway, they, they teach, a lot of people say, God does not do physical healings anymore. I know that cannot be true because the Lord Jesus Christ healed my son Derek of stuttering in one night, all right? I tell you, I've seen the miraculous happen in my life, so I know that can't be true. And they they say God doesn't do miracles anymore. He's not a supernatural God, that we have the Bible, and, and I thank God for the Bible. But let me tell you something. We need to understand uh, what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, and uh, and 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 get a hold of that. So this morning I've got some things for you to consider. All right, and uh, uh, and I'm just going to jump right into the word today, and I'm going to lay a foundation of biblical truth. We're going to take a look at a lot of scriptures today, and uh, let me just say that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or in the Holy Spirit is uh, a, an experience that believers can have that is subsequent to salvation. It comes after salvation, all right? And what it is, it is, it, it is an empowerment of the Holy Spirit to serve the Lord in simplest uh, terms, okay? So I've got some things I want you to consider today. First of all, we need to consider that the Bible is the basis of for all teaching, for all doctrine. How many of you agree with that? The Bible is the basis, right? And uh, let me just say this. You don't get to pick and choose what you believe in the Bible, right? You you don't get to say, well, I like this, but I don't believe this. I'm going to take this chapter out, this verse out. Let me tell you something. We need to read and understand the entire Bible, all 66 books of the Bible that are found in the canon of Scripture. And if you want to be a New Testament believer, if you want to experience biblical Christianity, you've got to go by the book. And so this is the book, right? And uh, let me just say that I believe that this book is God-breathed. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit, all right, and uh, I have done some studies about people who say that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, it's not for today. Speaking in tongues is a quote unquote of the devil, things like that. And you know what? A lot of those people say they say that you cannot draw your teachings from the historical part of the Bible. Now, I tell you, that is absolutely not found anywhere in God's Word. In fact, let me give you a Bible verse that talks about this. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, all Scripture. Tell your neighbor all Scripture. All of it, including the book of Acts, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for what? Teaching. It's useful for teaching for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. So all of it is true, all of it is inspired, and all of it should be used for teaching. All right. And so, you know, there's a lot of people in our world today, they think that all, that the last thing that God has done is that he sent his son Jesus on the planet to die for all of humanity, and I'm grateful for that. Come on, is there anybody that's a follower of Jesus? You're grateful of the the fact that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, was raised again, ascended into heaven. I'm grateful for all of that. But let me tell you something. God is still active in the world today. God has always been and always will be a supernatural God. God has not stopped and ceased in doing things upon the planet, all right? And so and so, what we want to understand is that all of the Scripture is necessary if we're going to understand these things. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. It's a powerful scripture. It says this, do not get drunk on wine. Huh. Amen. Which leads to debauchery. Boy, how many know that's true? Come on. But it goes on to say, instead, be filled with the Spirit. And so uh, we need to understand what that is all about. Let's just jump right over to point number two today, all right? I want you secondly to consider that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ was filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And he, how many of you are followers of Jesus? I'm a follower of Jesus. I want to follow Christ in everything that I do in my life. He's my Savior. He's my Lord, all right? And uh, we know that Jesus was indeed the Son of God, right? He, Jesus Christ is difficult to understand in his person because he was completely God and he was completely human, right? He came to the earth. 
Amen. And uh, Philippians chapter 2 tells us that, in 2 and verse number 7 tells us that Jesus emptied himself of his, of his you know, God powers in a way. And, uh, and uh, so he let all of that go because he wanted to be an example for us. And if you study the life of Jesus, what you're going to come to understand is that there was a season of preparation before Jesus went into ministry, right? How many of you remember that? He fasted for 40 days. He went out into the wilderness and fasted for 40 days. And there's a lot of people that think that he was out there kind of just fighting the devil. The devil was tempting him. Let me tell you what Jesus was doing for those 40 days. He was with his father, right? He was with God. He was seeking God. He was listening to the voice of his father, right? The whole thing of the temptation of Jesus was just a small portion of that. But interestingly enough, uh, you know, Jesus, we find that there are some powerful verses as Jesus came out of a season of preparation that speak of him as being full of the Holy Spirit. And so someone would say, well, I don't ever read anywhere where Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's true. You don't find that phrase referring to Jesus. But let's talk about the word baptism for a minute. How many of you are with me? How many of you know when you get baptized, what happens? When you baptize in water, you go immersed in water, right? You get immersed in water. The word baptism simply means to immerse. Okay. And, and so what happens is you get surrounded by water. And so can, let me just give you kind of a mental picture a baptism or immersion today, all right? If I took a shirt and stuck it in the washing machine, that shirt would become, and we turn the water on, obviously, okay? That shirt would become immersed, right? We would say we could baptize a shirt. That's true. We can immerse the shirt in water. And, that, and we can also describe the shirt like this. We could say the shirt is full of water. Couldn't we say that? We could say it's in the water. We could say water's flowing through the shirt. Why? Because it's completely immersed in the water, and the water's completely flowing in it and through it. Even the very fibers become, could become wet with it, all right? And so what's interesting is that there's a lot of different nomenclature in the Word of God that in a way describes the same type of thing. And let's look at these verses in Luke chapter 4 and verse number 1. Remember, we're talking about Jesus, our example. You're followers of Jesus, right? It says this, it says, Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Luke 4 and verse 14 says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Come on. And so as he began his ministry, he, what he said, he quoted an Old Testament verse. You might remember this. He went, I think it was in the city of Nazareth, right? And, and he went into the synagogue and he opened the Old Testament to this verse. And this is what he said. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Wow. And so what? hear what I'm saying today. Jesus gave us an example by his very life. He said, listen, you need to have a time of preparation. You need to have a time of seeking God. You need to have a time when, the, when, when, when God the Holy Spirit fills you up. How many of you agree with that today? Come on, I think it's time we get back to the Bible. If we can just have a big hand for Jesus today, that would be great. Amen. Amen. 